All right, today we are talking about graphing rational functions. We're going to be also finding out how to find the horizontal asymptote. We've already done vertical. Um, so this is section 2.6, part B. So for horizontal asymptotes, um, on the graph, um, okay, if we have a graph and we have a vertical asymptote, those are going to be lines that the function does not touch or cross that are vertical lines. So horizontal asymptotes are going to be very similar, but they're horizontal. So it's places where the function comes up to and does not touch or cross, but it will like follow along it. Um, it gets closer and closer and closer to it, but just never touches or crosses it. Um, so for our horizontal asymptote, we actually don't have to factor these. In order to find the horizontal asymptote, we're going to be comparing the polynomial in the numerator to the one in the denominator. What we're specifically looking for is the degree of each one of these. So since these are all in standard form, what we're really doing is just looking for the highest exponent um, on the numerator and the highest exponent on the denominator, and then we're comparing them. So if that degree, if that degree is uh, larger on the top, than it is on the bottom. So here I'm going to put big over small. So if there's a larger degree on the top than there is on the bottom, so it has big degree over small degree, then there's going to be no horizontal asymptote. I'm going to put H8 for horizontal asymptote. Okay, if we have a smaller degree over a larger degree, so we have small over big, that means there's a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. And then if we have the same degree over the same degree, then there's going to be a horizontal asymptote at y equals the leading coefficient over the leading coefficient. So we'll talk about what each of these mean. So the first thing we need to do is just look at our problem. So look at number one. Um, we have uh, the height, the degree on the top is two. The degree on the bottom is two. So because they're both the same, we're gonna look here. We have same over same. And because it's same over same, we're going to take the leading coefficient over the leading coefficient. So there is a horizontal asymptote here at y equals, remember the leading coefficient is just the number right in front of x, so or x squared, right in front of our highest exponent term. So in this case, since I don't see a number in front of x, it would be a one. The leading coefficient on the bottom is negative four, so there would be a horizontal asymptote here at y equals negative one fourth. Okay, so I was looking at my examples and they were all the same. So I decided I better change out some things. So this is actually now a different worksheet here. Um, but number one, let's just start again at number one. So on number one, we have the same degree in the numerator and the denominator. Since we have same over same, we're going to have our horizontal asymptote at y equals the leading coefficient, which on the top is negative one over the leading coefficient on the bottom, which would just be one. So negative one divided by one is negative one. So my horizontal asymptote would be at y equals negative one. On number two, the degree is two on the top, on the bottom it is one. So the degree on the top is bigger. Remember, if you don't see an exponent on x, it's a one, right? So the degree on the top is two, the degree on the bottom is one. Since it has a bigger degree over a smaller degree, this one is going to have no horizontal asymptote. Um, on number three, we have a two over one again, so bigger over small, so this one also has no horizontal asymptote. On number four, the degree at the top is actually zero because there are no x's there, so it has degree zero on the top, and on the bottom it has degree two. So that is a smaller degree over a larger degree, so small over big, so this one has a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. Same thing with number five because we have one over two, so small over big. There's a horizontal asymptote here at y equals zero. On number six, they're the same, both three. 
So we will have a horizontal asymptote at the leading coefficient over the leading coefficient. On the top, the leading coefficient is 1. On the bottom, it's 3. So that one would have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 1 third. All right, so let's skip down here. Um, we want to identify holes, vertical asymptotes, horizontal asymptote, and domain of each. So this is going to be review from last time a little bit too. So remember, in order to find the domain, we need to factor the denominator. And then to find holes, we need to factor the numerator and the denominator. And then anything that doesn't cancel out is an, uh, any zero that's still on the bottom that doesn't cancel out will be a vertical asymptote. And then our horizontal asymptote, we can just tell right now that the horizontal asymptote here is y equals zero because we have a smaller degree over a larger degree. So let's first factor the top. Obviously, just a four, we can't factor that. The bottom, we can x factor. So a is one and c is negative six. So a times c is negative six, and then b is negative one. So we're looking for two numbers that multiply to negative six and add to negative one. So that would be negative 3 and positive 2. So this is going to be x minus 3 and x plus 2. So our domain, remember, uh, we have to set each of our factors in the denominator equal to 0 and solve for x. And those are the values x cannot be because we can't divide by 0. So on number 15, the domain would be x cannot be 3 or negative 2. It can be any x values except for those two. And remember, those are called discontinuities. They're little places where uh, the function doesn't flow even or flow smoothly. There's going to be a hole or an asymptote there. And so on this one, because there are no matching factors in the numerator and the denominator, there are no holes. Um, and then the vertical asymptotes, remember, are going to be at the same places that the domain breaks. Um, unless it's a hole. But in this case, since there were no holes, both of these are vertical asymptotes. So this one has two vertical asymptotes, one at x equals 3 and one at x equals negative 2. On number 16, if I factor the top, I'm going to pull out an x squared. And that will leave me with x minus 3. On the bottom, the common factor is x. So this would be x times x squared. Oops, yeah, x squared minus 4. So our denominator still has a squared there, so we can, we can factor that one. So I've got x squared times x minus 3. And then the x squared minus 4, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to x factor that. So a is 1 and c is negative 4. So I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 4. My b term is not there, which means it's 0. So I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 4 and add to 0. That would be negative 2 and positive 2. So this would be x plus 2 and x minus 2. So going back, before we started factoring, I need to look for the horizontal asymptote. I need to look at the degree. They're the, it's the same over the same. So there's going to be a horizontal asymptote at y equals leading coefficient over leading coefficient, which would just be 1 over 1 in this case. The domain uh, would exclude these x values in the denominator that would make the, the denominator equal zero. So for the x out front, uh, it can't be zero. For these others, it cannot be negative two or positive two. So x can be anything except for those three values. Uh, there is a hole here because this x squared and this x, uh, since x squared is equal to x times x, one of those x's will cancel with the one on the bottom. So there is a hole at x equals 0, because remember it's from the 0 of that value that cancels. And then these other two would be the vertical asymptotes. So there's one at negative 2 and one at positive 2. So the domain, these discontinuities, the 0 is a hole, and the negative 2 and positive 2 are vertical asymptotes. So now we're just going to put all of that together, and we're going to sketch the graph. <clears throat> so. Uh, Rational functions always have graphs that look like two curves, and sometimes actually more curves, depending on how many vertical asymptotes you have. But generally, there's going to be some like horizontal asymptote somewhere, and there's going to be a vertical asymptote somewhere. And then you're going to have these two pieces, like two curves, that come up and approach those asymptotes from both ways. Um, but never touch or cross them. So it's kind of two distinct pieces, and they're always in 
kind of kitty corner position like that. So for example, I may I may have someone that looks like this, or I may have one that looks like this. You know, depending on where your asymptotes are located. But it's always going to be those kind of two curves, and they're always going to be in the opposite corners from one another. So we're going to kind of use that as we go through here. So the first thing we need to do is what we just did on the last two problems. We need to find out all this information. We need to know what is the domain. We need to know are there holes. We need to know are there vertical asymptotes and horizontal asymptotes. Um, and once we have all that information, this is actually going to be pretty easy to sketch. So remember to factor the numerator and denominator completely. This one does not have any factoring that we need to do. The denominator, denominator is x minus 4, so I know that x cannot equal positive 4 because that will make me divide by 0. So the domain excludes positive 4. There are no holes because there are no matching factors in the top and bottom that are going to cancel out. There is a vertical asymptote at x equals 4 since that, that discontinuity in the domain was not a hole. I know it's going to be a vertical asymptote. And then the horizontal asymptote would be at y equals 0 here because the numerator has a degree 0, the denominator has degree 1. So that's small over big, which gives me a y equals 0. So now when you sketch this, you're going to put those asymptotes on first. There's a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0 and a vertical asymptote at x equals 4. Okay. So I know that the graph itself is going to do one of two things. It's either going to hang out in these two corners, so it will look like that, or it's going to hang out in these two corners and look like that. Okay. To find out which one of those things it's actually going to do, we need to choose an x value, because remember, anytime you enter an x value, uh, into your function, you're going to get the y value that goes with it. So I don't want to choose the x value of 4 because that one is on the asymptote and there are no, there's no part of the function that's going to be there. So what I want to do is choose any x value across here besides 4. So let's do x equals 2. So I'm going to find f of positive 2. Remember that just means take my function and replace the x there with 2. So this would be 2 over 2 minus 4, which is the same as 2 over negative 2, which is the same as negative 1. So what that tells me, when I plug in x equals 2, that tells me when x equals 2 that y equals negative 1. So I know that 2 negative 1 is a point that is on this graph. So over here to 2 negative 1, that's right there. So because I just found that this point is on the graph, I know that this is where my curves are going to be. It's going to be there and then the one kitty corner to it. So that just showed me which two quadrants to put my curves in. Okay, if it would have ended up up here, then I would have known it was this one and this one. Okay, so it's just a quick sketch and it's not going to be too exact here. Okay, on number 18, there's also not a ton of factoring to do here, but we can, on the top, we can pull out a uh, positive 2. This is 2 times x plus 2 over x plus 1. So as far as uh, our domain goes, we're just looking at that x plus 1. x cannot be negative 1 because if it, it were, that would give me a 0 on the bottom. So remember when we're doing domain, x cannot be that value. Um, there are no holes again here because there are no matching factors on the top and bottom. The vertical asymptote then is at x equals negative 1. The horizontal asymptote, remember I had to compare the degree, so the degree of the top is 1, the degree of the bottom is the 1, and so that since they're both the same, it would just be leading coefficient over leading coefficient, which in this, in this case would be 2 over 1, which is just at 2. So go ahead and sketch your horizontal asymptote at y equals 2. Sketch your vertical asymptote at y equals negative 1. And then the only thing left to do is to try to decide which two quadrants my curves are in. So choose any x value besides the vertical asymptote, besides negative 1. So let's just actually put 0 in here. 
I can plug it into my factored one or to the original. It doesn't matter. They're both the same. So f of 0, I'm going to put it in the original, would be 2 times 0 plus 4 <clears throat> over 0 plus 1. So that would actually just simplify to 4 over 1. So when x is 0, y is 4. So 0, 4 is a point on the graph. So right here, which means that first curve's got to be up here in this quadrant, which means the second curve is going to be this one. And that's the graph. Okay, let's do one last one here. So on the top, this factors to, I can pull out x squared. And in fact, I'm going to pull out negative x squared just because my leading coefficient here is negative. If I pull out negative x squared, that's going to give me x minus 1. On the bottom, I can pull out an x, which would leave x squared minus 4x plus 3. So I'm not quite done factoring here. The top, I'm going to leave x squared times x minus 1. On the bottom, I can x factor uh, here. So 1 times 3 is 3. And so I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to 3 and add to negative 4. So that would be negative 1 times negative 3 is positive 3. Negative 1 plus negative 3 is negative 4. So I have x times x minus 1 times x minus 3. So the domain of my function is going to be all x values except for 0, 1, and 3, because those are the three values that would make my three factors in the denominator go to 0. There is, There are actually two holes here because one of these x's will cancel with that one. So there's going to be a hole at x equals 0. Uh, and then there's also a hole at x equals 1. And then the vertical asymptote would be, since 0 and 1 were holes, that 3 is going to be my vertical, or yeah, my vertical asymptote. And then the horizontal asymptote would happen, again, go back and look at the original before I started factoring. We have a degree 3 over degree 3, so they're the same. So leading coefficient over leading coefficient in this case would be negative 1 over 1. So the horizontal asymptote is y equals negative 1. So we'll go ahead and sketch that horizontal asymptote there by putting it at y equals negative 1. The horse, or the vertical would go at x equals 3, so that's where my asymptotes go. Um, in this case, we actually have holes. So we have one hole at x equals 0 and one at x equals 1. So I don't know exactly where the y values are going to be. I can find those by plugging in. Uh, let's see up here. After I had canceled out everything, I was left with negative x on the top and x minus 3 on the bottom. So this is the reduced uh, function after all the holes were canceled. So if I want to find the y values to these holes, I know there's one at x equals 0 and x equals 1. I can do that by plugging in these x values to the function to find the y value that goes with it. The only thing is, is that I have to do it in the reduced function. I can't do it in the original one um, just for the holes. I can do it in the original one for all the other ones where you're just finding a random x value. But if I'm looking for specifically where the holes are located, I have to use this reduced fraction because if I use the other one, my denominator is going to go to 0, right? Because if I put 1 in right there, that's going to make me divide by 0, which is undefined. So in order to find where this hole at x equals 0 is, I want to know where the y value is. I'm going to plug 0 in here, so the negative 0 over 0 minus 3, which means there's a hole right at 0, 0. Because when x is 0, I plugged it in, I got 0 divided by negative 3, which is also 0. So 0, 0 is where one of my holes is, so I'm going to put an open circle there at 0, 0. To find my other hole, I'm going to plug in 1, again, to the reduced after I cancel everything out. So negative 1 over 1 minus 3 gives me negative 1 divided by negative 2, or 1 half. So when x is 1, y is 1 half. So that's where my other hole is. So go over to x equals 1, go up to 1 half. So I know then that the rest of the function is going to fill in around those holes. So those two curves would be like this, and then the other one would be in this other corner. So if you have holes, reduce after canceling out, take that function that's left over, plug in the x values of your holes, you'll find the y values, and that will also tell you which 
quadrants your curves are in. If there are no holes, just choose any x value except for your vertical asymptote, and that will tell you where a y value is, and then you can sketch your graph. All right, good luck today, guys, and have a lovely day.